Have you ever wondered what it would be like to play a Soulsborne game with a little more charm that adds another layer to the traditional From Software lineage? What's going on guys, Snickle here. In this video, I'll be walking you through the most efficient way to get the Platinum Trophy in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice for the PlayStation 4. There are a few different ways to get through the game and earn all of the different endings, but in this video, I will focus on maximizing the amount of fun while trying to minimize the number of playthroughs and overall mindless grinding. Even though this is a partially open world game, there are some points in the game in which you can't get certain items, so things become missable. There will be spoilers throughout the guide as I'll be walking you through how to get each of the different ending trophies and what needs to be done to earn them all efficiently. This guide is meant for people that have never played the game before. It's something they can watch to help them map out how they should go about getting this platinum. As for a breakdown of the trophy list, it consists of 18 bronze, 11 silver, 4 gold, and of course 1 platinum with a total of 34 trophies. There aren't any missable trophies per se, but there are missable items that are tied to trophies, thus if you do miss the item, you will miss the trophy. I will go through each one of these missables in detail. 25 of these trophies are related to the story, this being bosses, areas, and different endings. You are theoretically supposed to play through the game a total of 4 times, but this guide will get you all the endings in around 2-ish playthroughs. You should get a total of 27 of the trophies throughout your first full playthrough, and then the additional 7 in your second playthrough. There are no online trophies as the game does not have multiplayer functionality. Down in the description below you will find a few useful links. One link will lead you to my breakdown of the trophy list, and there will be another link to PSM Profiles, which is where you can find a full walkthrough guide for the game. You will also find any other links that I think will be useful as well, and a full list of the order that I specifically earned my trophies. In the upper right hand corner you will see the trophy tracker, when that reaches 34 out of 34 you should have collected every trophy in the game and successfully earned your platinum trophy. With all of that being said, let's get into this guide. Before we get into the trophy and story walkthrough I do want to point out a few general strategies that you can use to get through the game. Most people may be here for these or have been struggling and want to know how to beat specific bosses. When it comes down to it, many bosses you will need to either learn their moveset and adapt your playstyle and attacks, or you can try to cheese them and manipulate the game to make it easier. If you don't want to learn certain moves and you want to get through the bosses as fast as possible, the best thing to do is use the firecrackers and stun the boss as much as possible while attacking. This won't be an instant kill or anything, but it will help you get a good chunk of easy damage done. Another method is to not deflect attacks if you're bad with timing and dodge and stay away. This is a little longer of a method, but if you keep dodging and playing safe, you can slowly whittle down the boss's health and then get a final blow. The last method to use if you're having issues is to attack using the mortal blade. You will use spirit emblems when using your first few attacks, which will reach far and do good damage. Once you are out of spirit emblems though, you can continue to use the mortal blade, but the attack will not reach as far. Using these three aforementioned methods will help you get through nearly every boss in the game with ease. Starting off for your first playthrough, all you want to do is play through the game and not worry about anything at all. You can collect anything and kill anything you want to until you get to the final two bosses in the game, that being the Guardian Ape Undying and the Corrupted Monk. Once you kill both of these bosses, you will be met with the option of the endings on top of Cure's Tower. So make sure that you keep one of them alive as you backtrack through the game and make sure that all many bosses and items have been collected. First thing you want to do is go through and make sure that you have all the prosthetic tools. This will earn you the trophy All Prosthetic Tools, which is to acquire all the prosthetic tools. All of these can be earned before starting to build for the three endings we are getting in this playthrough. The trophy All Ninjutsu Techniques should also be earned after defeating the Guardian Ape Undying. The other two techniques come from defeating Genichiro Ishina and the Folding Screen Monkeys. Now let's work towards upgrading your vitality and posture as much as possible before triggering the endings. You should be able to collect 29 total prayer beads or 7 necklaces before progressing further. There are a total of 40 prayer beads throughout the whole game. Also we will want to collect as many gourds as possible before progressing. There are a total of 9 gourds to be collected throughout the game and you should have found 8 by this point. The link to PSM Profiles below will take you to a trophy list where if you click on the associated trophy it will show you the location of each of the prayer beads and gourd seeds. There is also a video to accompany. Now that we have all of the prosthetic tools, ninjutsu techniques, prayer beads, and gourd seeds that we can get at the moment, we can start to work towards setting up the three endings. You want to go to the top of Kuro's tower and talk to Al. Pick the option Break the Iron Code and stay loyal to Kuro. Doing this triggers another set of areas and three of the endings. 
Let's get into how to set up each of the endings since all you need to do is give different items to Kuro after the final boss battle to get the different endings. The trophy Immortal Severance will be earned if you were to just go through the rest of the story and give Kuro only the Dragon Tears at the end after the last boss battle. The trophy Purification takes a little more effort to get some more information and items to give to Kuro at the end. After fighting Al, you want to eavesdrop on Kuro behind the slats in his room and then rest at the idol. You then want to talk to Emma upstairs and tell her that you agree with her. Kuro cannot be allowed to die and then rest at the idol again. Talk to Emma again and then go to Old Grave. Go left immediately into the graves and talk to Emma again. Now go to the dilapidated temple and eavesdrop on Emma through the slats behind the building. After, head into the temple and confront Emma and keep talking to her until she gives you the father's bell charm. Use this charm on the Buddha statue to the left of her which will bring you to a different Harada estate. Continue through the Harada estate and when you get to the audience chamber idol where Lady Butterfly was, you should find Al again and fight him. After beating him, you will get the aromatic flower. When you continue through the story and you get to Kiro, you want to give him the aromatic flower and the dragon tears to get this ending. Lastly, let us set up the trophy return. After defeating Al, you want to head into the inner sanctum and accept rice from the Divine Child three times, eating it each time to get rid of it. After she gives you rice three times, she will get sick and ask for a persimmon, which can be bought from the merchant in the Shugando Idol in the Senpo Temple. Give the persimmon to the Divine Child and she will give you rice for Kuro. Give the rice to Kuro and then travel away and return to him and he will give you a sweet rice ball. Eat the sweet rice ball and then go talk to the Divine Child telling her that you ate the rice. Now you will need to get the Holy Chapter Infested. This can be found in the Temple Grounds Idol in the Senpo Temple in the pond with the two carps. You may have grabbed this earlier in the game, so if you did just talk to the Divine Child again and give her the Holy Chapter Infested. Now continue to travel from the Inner Sanctum and return until the Divine Child is gone. From here you want to enter the Blue Rift which will take you to the Hall of Illusions where the Folding Screen Monkeys were and talk to the Divine Child again. Now you'll want to head to the main hall in the Senpo Temple, head to the left, drop down, and turn around crouching under the rocks. At the end of this path there should be a dead monk with the Holy Chapter Dragon's Return. Now bring this back to the Divine Child. Now we need to get the fresh and dried serpent Viscera. The fresh can be found at the first idol in the Senpo Temple. You'll want to use the Puppeteer Ninjutsu technique on a small enemy straight out in front of the idol. He will operate a kite which you will need to progress a little farther in the Senpo Temple to use. Once you use the kite, you will fall down a path grappling trees on the way down making sure not to fall. Once you get to the bottom, just follow the path and perform a death blow on the serpent's head. Now we need to get the Dried Serpent Viscera. Head to Badastava Valley Idol and head down into the Poison Pools. You will eventually reach a merchant, head into the cave behind him. Once you get into the cave, you will see the serpent. Head around and use the Puppeteer Ninjutsu technique on a monkey to distract the serpent. Once it's distracted, you can grapple up into the building and grab the Dried Serpent Viscera. Now you'll want to head back to the Divine Child and give her the Dried Serpent Viscera, then travel away and back. When you return, the doors will be shut and you want to eavesdrop. Head back to Kuro now and use all dialogue until he cuts himself. You may need to talk to Emma to get the incense for Kuro to cut himself. Then head back to the Divine Child and she will give you Frozen Tears. Use these and the Dragon Tears on Kuro after beating the final boss to get the return ending. If you had any issues following any of those steps, be sure to pause the video intermittently until the task is done or follow the steps listed in the description below. Now that we have set up all three of those endings, we can start to work towards getting to the final boss. Continue through the new Harada Estate and Fountainhead Palace, collecting the rest of the Gourd Seeds and Prayer Beads to get you the trophy's peak physical strength and ultimate healing gourd. After progressing all the way through the Fountainhead Palace and New Harada Estate, you will be ready to fight the final boss, but there are a few more things that we want to do before finishing the game. First off is getting all the Lapis Lazuli in this playthrough. You're only net 6 per playthrough and 10 are needed to fully upgrade it all prosthetics. This is where the second playthrough is needed. The first two are sold by the Fountainhead Noble Pot or Merchant in the Harada Estate for 6 treasure scales each. The third is dropped by the Fountainhead Noble Pot or Merchant in the Harada Estate after defeating the Great Carp. The fourth is dropped by a Shichichim Warrior in the Fountainhead Palace. And the fifth and sixth are dropped by the Demon of Hatred, which can be found in the final phase of the Ashina Outskirts. The next thing we want to do is work towards getting three more unique items that can be used for upgrades. The first being the Phantom Kuna, which can be bought from Aniyama the Peddler at the Ashina Outskirts Stairs for 3,000 Sen, or at the Offering Box for 4,500 Sen. 
The next is the Malcontents Ring, which is dropped from a Shijitsum warrior that spawns at the Guardian Apes Bureau after severing the immortality of the Headless Ape. Lastly is the Pine Resin Ember, which can be found in the Maibu Village down a ravine on the opposite side of the lake on top of a house. If you need Sen, be sure to farm kills in the Ashina outskirts at the stairway. There are five enemies there that you can continue to stealth kill over and over again. Now we need to unlock all of the available skills. The Shinobi Esoteric Text and the Prosthetic Esoteric Text are obtained early in the game. Next is the Ashina Esoteric Text, which is given from the Tengu after helping him kill some rats. After that, we have the Senpo Esoteric Text, which can be found in Senpo Temple by the main hall idol by the dead monk found in the return ending. Lastly is the Mushin Esoteric Text, which is given to you by talking to Emma at Kuro's Tower after getting the final skill in any skill art tree. When you access the Mushin Esoteric Text, you want to go to either the Fountainhead Noble Pot Merchant or the Harada Estate Noble Pot Merchant and buy the skill Floating Passage for 5 Treasure Carp Scales to unlock the final skill in the Mushin Arts. After unlocking all the skills and upgrading all your prosthetic tools as much as possible, you can head to finish the game. After defeating Sword Saint Ishinashina, you want to back up your save to either a USB flash drive or the cloud. Once that is done, enter back into the game and give Kira the Dragon Tears to get the trophy Immortal Severance. Then quit the game and load your backed up save onto your PS4. Now load in and give Kira the Aromatic Flower and Dragon Tears to earn the trophy Purification. Then quit out again and load your backed up save one more time. Now load in and give Kira the Frozen Tears and Dragon Tears to earn the trophy Return. Watch this until the end and then load up New Game Plus and we can start the second playthrough. For this playthrough, you want to do what we did for the first and play through the game until you get to the decision with Al on top of Kiro's room. Many mini bosses and areas can be skipped. I was able to get back to Al in around two ish hours in this playthrough. Now, what we want to do is create a backup save again on a USB flash drive or the cloud. This can overwrite the previous save that we made in the first playthrough. Load back into the game, and when you talk to Al, tell him you're going to obey the Iron Code and forsake Kuro. This will trigger a fight with Emma and Ishinashina. Once you finish the fight, you should get the trophy Man Without Equal, which is to defeat all bosses, and also the trophy Shura, which is to attain the Shura ending. Once these trophies are earned, quit out of the game and load your save back onto your PS4. Talk to Al again and tell him you're going to break the Iron Code and stay loyal to Kuro. This will trigger a fight with Al again. Now make your way to Fountainhead Palace and collect the rest of the Lapis Lazuli needed for the final prosthetic upgrades. Once you have the Lapis Lazuli and all items, finish upgrading the final two prosthetics to earn the trophy Master of the Prosthetic. After this, we will get into the worst part of the game, which is grinding for the final skills. You want to grind for these skills in your New Game Plus playthrough since you'll earn more XP per kill in New Game Plus. The best place I found was in the Ashina outskirts at the stairway idol during the second phase when the Ashina castle is on fire. There are five total enemies that you can stealth kill and get XP and money extremely fast. This step took me approximately two to three hours to finish grinding for all the skills that I was missing. This may take more or less depending on the amount of skills you got through your playthroughs. Getting your final skill will earn you the trophy Height of Technique. This trophy in and of itself is the biggest buzzkill for this platinum. After setting up each of those endings, hours of grinding, and possibly a few broken controllers, you will finally have this Platinum Trophy Sekiro. So does this game stack up to a Soulsborne game at the end of the day? In its own quirky way, it does. It puts you on edge to not want to die to lose progress, whether it's how far you've gotten into the level or the XP and send you've been saving up. There isn't ever a moment in the game where you can sit back and just breeze through with no worries, and that thought of doubt or worry is what makes a Soulsborne game so exhilarating to play. The moment you beat a boss that you've been dying to dozens of times, or learning to deflect or dodge properly to decimate your enemy is just some of the satisfaction that this game will leave you with. But just like a Soulsborne game, your trials and tribulations will be etched into your brain forever. It's a game that's brutal to you at first, but so satisfying once you master it. Overall, the multiple endings can be a lot to take on at first, but once you realize how to get through each one, it's very easy. And even if you do miss something, you have to play New Game Plus at a minimum. If you aren't into loading up multiple saves, then disregard the save reloading method and play fully back through the game to get each of the endings. This game took me a few weeks to platinum, but I did put it down for a while after getting it on release. Realistically, you can get through the game in around 60-70 to 70 hours throughout your two playthroughs. There is no DLC as of recording this video, so once you get to platinum, you will obtain the 100% completion as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Also, let me know below your experience with the game. Did you like it? Have you not played it yet? I would love to hear from everyone. 
If you did find this video helpful though, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Follow me on Twitter at SnickleYT and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash imsnickle. If you're having any issues with anything in the game, be sure to check all the links in the description below. And remember, have patience. Also down in the description below is a link to my Platinum playlist where I upload all the Platinums that I've gotten over the past few years. Go check that out and suggest any of the games for me to cover in the future. I only want to make these types of videos on games that I've platinum so that I can give my two cents and help you guys get the platinum more efficiently. If you want to see my breakdown of the trophy list, you can also find that in the description below as well. Anyway, I hope to see you around sometime soon.